Hey, guten Morgen. Wie geht's? Hi guys, it's Jeff here once again with the Sense of Things with Ron. Ron, how you doing, buddy? Good morning. I, I didn't know we had European translators on the uh, podcast. It is. I tell you what, uh, just got back from uh, Europe two days ago, a day and a half ago at this point. So still trying to get back into the swing of things a little bit. First day back in the office. So excited to get back on the podcast and get things up and running here. Yeah, did did you see Big Ben Parliament or did you get beat up in Germany during the Oktoberfest? No, didn't get to do the slap dance. No stuff. European I, vacation I, with Chevy Chase. Yes, we watched that before we left. Of course, I always have to do the Big Ben Parliament thing. The funny part is the whole Big Ben Parliament thing. There is no gigantic traffic circle, so I don't know oh, really? what they ever did for that. There is no gigantic traffic circle to go around Big Ben and Parliament. So I don't know what that was. They did rework the bridge that comes across, so they may have changed that over the years. But I, you know, all the years I've been going there, I don't ever remember seeing a giant traffic circle. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, it was a good trip. We went there for the Christmas markets, and this was a big bucket list trip for us. And I'll have a little bit of my take on the the European markets and, and what's going on over there. I saw some interesting little green shoots over there for sure. Never a dull moment here over the last two weeks since our last podcast. But I think I know we'll have at least uh, probably one more podcast, maybe a year end or 2024 yeah. outlook next week. But I thought what might be fun would be to let's review the Florida man stories of 2023. Now, I awesome. will say I had a pair of these down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot more than we're going to go through. And these are not in any particular order, nor did I rank them. I so, so not for a not, not a uh, not a Letterman countdown then. No, I All think right. people will make their own priority decisions. But Florida man sentenced to federal prison for murdering FBI informant. Okay, so I thought that was interesting. Next one: beer belly wrestling, evading arrest obstacle course on tap for inaugural Florida man games. Okay. I'm liking this at all. This is awesome. I, did, I think your next trip is going to be to Florida for that. I think, yep. I got to do some beer belly wrestling. So <laughs> next one, Florida man sentenced after viral video shows him beating shark to death. Okay. Great. So I guess I can't see, I guess you can't do that in Arizona. Or yeah, I guess not. Next one, barefoot bandit steals ladder from Fort Myers home. And the picture on this was actually like, a, not an infrared, but one of those black and white, like in the dark pictures of some guy just picking up a ladder and walking away. And running away barefoot yet, of course. Florida man spotted riding jet ski motorcycle on highway in, in Cape Coral. The, okay. the picture on this was actually pretty funny. He's just the sitting there riding a jet ski on the highway. The jet ski motorcycle, almost as good as the bull in the right-hand side of a police, an old police car. A hundred percent. I had a client mention about the bull. Next one, Florida man slaps woman with slice of pizza during argument. Now, we never advocate for violence. Yes. But look, if you're going to hit somebody, it might as well be with a slice of pizza, right? A slice of pizza, unless it's got pepperoni on it, which could cause... Or sausage. Some... Especially if those are hard meatballs on there. That's true. All right, next one. Florida man caught with gopher tortoise during gasoline theft spree. So apparently, I don't know if the tortoise was the wingman, was the wheelman, or the grease man in the theft. But you gotta love that he brought his tortoise on the. On I'm the trying spring. to figure out what a gopher tortoise is at this point. Some kind of turtle. Yeah, I've, I in Texas we have jackalope, so maybe a gopher tortoise is something in Florida. Possibly. Next one: Florida man uses stapler in attempt to rob public supermarket. Now, did it staple you? I will say, if we had a vote, that might be a top three. I'm yeah. just saying, yes. I don't and know if it was a Boston or a swing line stapler. Maybe one could have looked more dangerous than the other. I'm not sure. And probably his accomplice was there with a piece of paper to do paper cuts to people too. Or no, he had the reloading of the staples. Okay, there we go. Yes. Now, we would not advocate anything like this, but Florida man blames voodoo after impregnating 13 year old girl. Okay. So I'm not sure where that was in Florida, but I don't think that's going to help this case. Yeah, I don't think he's really, yeah, that, I don't, yeah, I'm sorry. Are you a, zoo, a zombie or what? And of course, tis the season. I had to leave this last. Florida man caught having sex with dog destroys nativity scene. Okay. 
that's just disgusting and a bad image for my brain. <laughs> and isn't anything sacred for crying out loud? I know. Good Lord. I, I rewatched, of course, as always. I mean, love poor, poor Mary Magdalene. She had to witness this. I know. And I mean, I, for crying know, out loud, in nativity scenes, aren't there goats? So weren't they embarrassed too? Goats were there. Of course, if you're a Love Actually fan, there was, of course, first and second <laughs> lobster and a, uh, and a, 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 a octopus. Yeah. And like I said, I had a pair of these down. There were probably 20 or 30 more, more along the lines of the second to the last one versus some of the others. Okay. So I wanted to spare the audience for- One of those I is enough. Yeah. One representative no, one is enough. Everybody's going to be around friends and family. I didn't think it was worth sharing some of the other ones. <laughs> All right. To, to get a little more serious, I got two other slides here. Some of the things that came out yesterday from the Fed decision and then some of the headwinds ahead of us. So I thought this was interesting that not only came out from the Fed speak, but also from the, the Fed futures. So they expect down to get to 2.1 inflation by end of 2025. The last mile is the toughest. It's like trying to lose that last fiber for you and me, 15 to 25 pounds, mm -hmm. just one of those things. So I think that's interesting. We knew it was going to take time, but within two years, yeah, maybe they see the unemployment rate only going up to 4.1. We ticked down from 3.9 to 3.8. Uh, I could see this by the end of next year. Yeah, uh, definitely. If not a lot sooner, I thought we might bump up to 4.5, but mm. I thought that was interesting. And then I thought this was like the crazy thing more than anything else. The Fed futures rate is anticipating three cuts next year, four in 2025. Mm. Now, if the economy gets used to higher interest rates, mm. right? Higher borrowing rates, higher 30 year fixed rates for mortgages. If, even if the economy is getting used to that's one thing, but to anticipate seven cuts in the next 24 months. Yeah. I mean, something broke or something significantly happened in pockets of our economy that, wait a minute, no, no, no. We need to free up credit. Yeah. We need to free up spending you know, for businesses and whatever it may be. Yeah. That's a little disconcerting it's, to me. It's like it's, it's, yeah. It's completely dis or illogical because, okay, so it's going to take until 2021 or 2025 to get down to 2%. So if you start making all these cuts, so what you're saying is we're already going to be down to 2.1% in the next, what, two or three months. And then the Fed's going to start cutting massively because the economy is coming unglued. Look, I, I got to tell you, a lot of what's going on in the last 24 months has baffled me. More specifically, yep. the last 12 months between starting out with the Silicon Valley Bank and obviously the bond market going crazy, which I'll talk about in a second. I, I'm not a bond guy. I've never been a bond guy. I never bought a treasury before last year. Mm -hmm. And experts that I talked to that have been involved in the bond market, not just for years, but for decades. I've, seen, I've never seen bond moves that we've that like what we've seen in the last two years. Mm. And they just go, you know, a one point move would normally take six months. Yeah. We saw it in six weeks. Yeah. Uh, it's not normal. And you got to think about the banks, the lending institutions out there that are trying to apply risk management and they use the bond market to help them apply risk management. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Have at it. Yeah. And, and they're, yeah, they're relying on the stability of the bond market to go, okay, we know it's going to move. Okay. We can anticipate, but yeah, we were seeing those snapbacks of a full percentage point in the 10 year over a few week time period earlier this year, which is just insane. And I think we've snapped back the other way too fast. Now it's, it's gone way, way down. Yes. Okay. Where's the stability going to happen? It's supposed to be the most boring place to invest. And it's not the most boring place to invest. Right well, people made a lot of money if they were buying, let's say, corporate bonds at the in, in October time frame yeah. and selling them now. They're they're making a ten to a fifteen percent profit at the minimum, depending on the quality of the bond. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I just want to talk about some other headwinds that are not going away. They're still here, and they're still going to be there going in the next year. Mm. So number one, we just spoke about it. The 10 year hit 502 end of October. Mm. Now we're down to 396 as of this morning. Yeah. Absurd. I'm not saying 502 is absurd. I'm not saying 
396 is absurd. I'm just talking about the move. The move, yeah. Six that weeks. fast in six weeks. Yeah, tough. Carryover credit card balances keep hitting all-time highs. Mm -hmm. So go YOLO, baby. You only live once. It's, it is tis the season. People do spend it this time of the year. This time last year, credit card balances were $925 billion. We breached $1 trillion a couple months ago. We talked about it. And the trajectory is still going higher. People aren't paying it off. And the credit card companies and banking institutions are not extending credit lines. Mm -hmm. So with that, credit card interest rates, this hasn't changed since our last time, averaging over 21%. Student loan moratorium lifted in October. Many of these people are going to have to make a decision which to pay or cut it in half and go into more debt. Auto loan delinquency rate hits 8.3% highest in 22 years. Delinquency rate on credit card loans is 2.8% highest than 11. Mm -hmm. And the LEI, as we've seen it before, keeps trending down for over 30 straight months. Yeah. Comments, please. Help me help me understand why the market is basically near all-time highs with I all this in front of us. I understand there's a kind of a leg up before the first rate cut. I get that. But how do you ignore facts here? Talk to me. You, you can't. And the, the thing is, it's just, this stuff just keeps compounding on compounding. You just look at that credit card interest rate right there. Yeah. Every four years, your credit card balances are doubling at yeah. that point. And if you're paying just your minimum payments, Forget it's it. going to take 125 years to pay those off at this point. I think a lot of people have, there was this kind of, during the pandemic, there was a lot of free cash flying around. The government was giving out a lot of money and people built up savings and got used to living this kind of unique lifestyle of I can just spend money and go do whatever I want to do. And yep. they weren't really spending on things like travel, which are big, expensive things. And now all of a sudden they're now spending on big, expensive things. And, oh, I'll just pay it off down the road. And right. it just ain't going to happen. I think the only saving grace to all of this is we've got a really low unemployment rate. If that changes, all yeah. of this comes unglued very fast. Yeah. I mean, they can barely pay this now. Look, the, the stat hasn't changed for almost 10 years that I've been following. We've talked about it before, but the average American doesn't have $400 in the bank account for an emergency purchase. Yeah. But then, you know, I saw this morning, the big economic news this morning is retail sales. And retail sales were up 0.3%. Uh, Consensus was negative 0.1. So this is October to November. So you're taught, or November to December, I guess this was. People are still out spending like maniacs, which is obviously here. When does that stop? When do they run out of money or run out of credit? And then all of a sudden, all this comes to a screeching halt. No, they are running out of credit because a lot of these credit card companies aren't extending credit lines. Oh, yeah. So at some point, it does have to slow down. When, who yeah. the hell knows, maybe after holiday season. I'm three to six months behind my call from a year ago for this mm. year. And a lot of the experts that I follow thought it would be late Q4 into next year. It may or may not happen. I'm beyond shocked. Hey, listen, yeah. it looks good for all of our clients and everything mm. else, but we've got to be risk managers too and look out into the future. And although we may go through and, and hit a couple of potholes, still think we'll be higher at the end of next year in 2025. But yeah. what's in front of us, we don't know the contagion effect if multiple of multiple items here hit at one time. Mm. And we're not even talking about, remember, the commercial credit, the commercial real estate credit that they're talking about the next couple of years is going to come due. There's a lot of other factors we haven't discussed here. But at some point, a lot of this has to do with the consumer. It's got to hit sometime. Yeah. Home I think that are all time highs. How is this happening? Yeah. Well, and I think home builders are in a little bit better position this time because I, I was just listening to, to one of the, the business channels while I was picking up breakfast this morning and they were talking about it. And the, the home builders are just different than what they were in 2008. 2008, they were building spec homes like crazy because they would just be able to sell them. Now they're working one year at a time and saying, okay, this is what we think we can sell. They're basically selling out of everything that they have. They're not carrying inventory in there. And then, like I said, most of them have either brought in-house or have captive mortgage companies. So they're able to juice the deals a little bit and get people into new homes. Yeah. Um, it's when I talk to realtors, 
they're struggling at this point because no inventory. yeah those no there's inventory but there's just not the buyers out there the buyers are on the sidelines because of interest rates and if there's a premium property there's a bidding war we have that out here in phoenix yeah yeah here not so much we're not i see a ton of places that still have signs up especially in my neighborhood which is a little bit higher higher end neighborhood for our area there's houses that have been on the market for seven eight months now Whereas in the height of this thing, they would be on the market for a week. And but some of those that have been on longer, they, they may be fix up, fix us, fix up properties too. You don't know. No, not maybe. really. Yeah, no, not really. Our neighborhood's relatively new. I, I think the, oh. the biggest thing is, I think a lot of people are stubbornly pricing their houses higher than where the market will support right now for existing homes. The home prices here in the area have not really come back. They came back off the silly, ridiculous highs, but uh, they haven't come back from, or they, they haven't reversed down from what I would say maybe it was two years ago. They're staying stubbornly high. Interesting. All right. What do you want to go over? I think we covered retail sales. What I wanted to do, spending the last two weeks in Europe, it gave me a different view, I guess, of our world because I didn't have my daily dose of financial news besides CNN, which just okay talks to about- shut down every now and then. Yeah. CNN just literally talks about climate nonstop. It's just every single segment, they find some way of tweaking it to, to climate. So I really didn't care. And, and the only other thing that was in English was Bloomberg, which is God awful boring. So I just looked at the markets, looked at it from the perspective of what's going on out there. And I will say, I'm somewhat intrigued and investment wise with the European market going into next year. It's literally been in a decline flat line yeah. for most of this year, but there's been a little bit of, as our markets reversed earlier this year around November, there's been come somewhat of a similar thing going on, but it's not our market taken off and getting above where it was earlier in the year. This is just now getting back to where they were actually before uh, or gotcha. at the high point. So it's it's intriguing. And from someone that likes the the technical aspects of hitting new highs, I think it's very intriguing. I think Europe's going to be, they're, they're behind us a little bit on the inflation part. They talk about inflation constantly. I will tell you, I, I thought the prices were very reasonable at the current rates as far as the yeah the euro rates i thought it was very reasonable i didn't feel expensive we went to areas like prague which were it's insanely cheap you could live in prague for probably a couple grand a month and live really well in yeah, there um, the hotel we stayed in was the nicest one of the whole trip and i think we maybe spent a hundred dollars a night with breakfast every day with the best breakfast i've ever had on any trip so it, it was very intriguing. Uh, Germany, which traditionally is very expensive, I thought was very reasonable. Um, Berlin's especially a gem uh, from that perspective. It's a big city. It's a capital city. It's beautiful. And the pricing was still very reasonable. So I, I think they're, they usually lag behind us a little bit, but I think they may actually run ahead of us a little bit. I know that um, uh, when Germany was in a recession for a while, I think Britain was teetering. I think France yeah. was teetering. Yeah. And I know I heard a couple of people talking yesterday after the Fed decision that Europe's not going to lower rates until the U.S. lower rates. I, I, Europe's going to do what Europe's going to do based what's good for them. Yeah. And I think they're, the world is much different there. They, basically, they were at negative interest rates for almost four years, which is just insane. You're right. putting money in and having to pay them to take your money which I still right. don't understand how that works. It makes no sense to me. Right. And Germany's supposed to be pretty good with numbers, so who knows? I, I I don't get how it worked. I see how it worked for them. I just didn't see how it worked for anybody else. But <laughs> yeah, like I said, I think it's very intriguing. It's going to be something that I'm going to keep my eye on. I know we and our portfolios added a position into the Eurostocks 50 this month, which is the tech-oriented one. Just because I really feel like there's some things going on there. It's just, yeah. it, it's very intriguing. And I think adding a little bit of international exposure, at least in Europe, I'm not so sure about the the Asian region besides Japan. But yeah, it's like I said, it's very intriguing to me. Right? I, I don't mind looking to invest internationally more of an international fund than individual stocks. This is the problem. Yeah. 
I know it's different from Europe and the different countries in Europe compared to China or Japan, but we have a certain accounting standards here, gap accounting. Yeah. That, and, and also specific laws and rules that need to be followed for public companies when it comes to reporting. Mm. Europe's different. Yeah. So you're not valuing companies in Europe the same way you would in the U.S. That's why if you're going to invest internationally, you got to go for a fund. I wouldn't mm. touch anything in China because I don't believe any of their numbers. No. Uh, the cook in their books or juice and something. But even if you're look, it happens in the U.S. We know that we're you know we're we're not lily white ourselves. But I, I just find it difficult to be a, a stock picker of your of European companies. Mm. It's too difficult because of the yeah. the accounting uh, standards. And like I said, I I feel the same way. I don't. The other part of it is typically I'll buy a, a fund that has a little bit of a hedge to it. In those cases, that hedges the currency a little bit when the other we're in a situation where the their currency could work against us, uh, which it has been. The dollar has been down a little bit, so hedging having one that hedges currency a little bit too helps out massively in those cases. But yeah, like I said, I think uh, adding some exposure. I'm I I don't buy individual stocks there at all, just because I don't know them well enough to, right. to be able to do it. A lot of them are big, massive companies that trade right. here as well. So I, I'm not a big fan of small caps over there and certainly not here even no. at this point. So no, wouldn't touch it, but I think we're done. The major economic news for this mm -hmm. calendar year next yep. year, I think we should just do it next month, the next week. We should do it to do a good recap yep. and uh, give our forecast for next year and see where we are. There's a lot of things that happen the way I think we thought it would happen. Mm. And there were other things that I think surprised the crap out of us. So maybe we'll I, We talked about recession for an entire year and we've not seen it. I'm, I, the Fed's still beating their chest that they've created this soft landing. It, it, every time I hear them say one thing, it can turn out to be something completely different. Well, January and February are two very big months for layoffs. Mm. And I know we saw this last year, you know, selectively. It'll be interesting to see what happens uh, January and February. A lot of the fund managers pushing up performance for end of year to juice up their numbers. Does, does that mean that they start to sell off in the last week or two to mm -hmm. lock in their performance? Or is that going to happen in early January? We'll see. We'll, yeah. we'll see what happens. But to be determined next week. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for joining us on the show. We do these for you because we're... We're trying to figure this out and share as much as we can with you and give you the most current news at the time. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here next week. I'm glad to be back and have a wonderful day.